As an exercise physiologist, Dr. Bloomer, what are the effects of hypohydration? Essentially, what? not getting enough water, right? Lack of fluid intake. Yeah, we've, we've looked at this um, in relation to acute exercise bouts during the exercise and then post-exercise, and there's a wealth of literature on this topic. Primarily because when individuals perform resistance exercise, we know that the resistance exercise stress itself will alter protein turnover during the post-exercise period in such a way that protein synthesis may be increased. However, protein degradation or proteolysis may be increased to a greater extent. So a lot of nutritional supplement companies and manufacturers mm -hmm. and formulators, et cetera, want to target that particular scenario with their pre or their intra workout, you know, sort of supplements. Um, when you look at the literature in terms of hydration status, we know that a hypohydrated state, in other words, a quote, dehydrated state, mm -hmm. where individuals are not consuming adequate fluid intake, in particular water, will actually alter the hormonal profile in such a way that it favors protein degradation or mm. catabolism okay. as opposed to anabolism. So that's a real concern for you know, athletes in particular that are undergoing strenuous resistance exercise session, sessions with the objective of increasing lean muscle mass during the post-exercise recovery period. So formulations that provide some sort of support in terms of hydration, in addition to normal water consumption or potentially a very diluted carbohydrate beverage, maybe a four to 6% carbohydrate solution um, consumed before and during and after the workout um, seems to be helpful in that regard. Now, for an individual who's not exercising or exercising sporadically, we know that hydration status is important as well for these same reasons. So, in fact, there's even a literature supporting the intake of fluid with weight maintenance or, or weight loss or fat loss. Right. Some of that may be somewhat linked to a uh, decrease in the hormone cortisol because we know that, for example, hypohydration is associated with elevated cortisol levels. Now, cortisol is not the evil hormone that everyone thinks it is. But it it is serves a, a useful purpose in the body. Hormone, but right? <laughs> it, it can be associated with you know, issues related to um, you know, fat storage potentially, as well as muscle degradation um, you know, during those periods of time. So ideally, we'd like people to maintain a normal hydration status throughout the day. They're urinating frequently throughout the day. Um, there's different formulas for computing fluid intake. Um, there's different recommendations, eight, eight ounce glasses per day, which would be 64 ounces per day. And is that ideal? Well, I mean, personally, I think that's probably a little bit too low, especially mm -hmm. if someone's consuming, you know, normal electrolyte intake and normal sodium intake, et cetera, especially if they live in a hot human environment, if they're an active individual. Um, I like people to be on the order of a gallon or so of water per day, depending on size, if they're relatively a relatively small person, perhaps slightly less than that. If they're a larger, more active person, uh, slightly more than that. But what amount. if they're sedentary? If, if they're sedentary, still, I think it's important that they're consuming, you know, fluid intake regularly throughout the day. It's mm -hmm. ideal to have water with you. If you're working at a desk, have it with you at your desk. If you're someone that works on the road, have it with you in the car. If you work in the field, have it with you in a thermos or a cooler or something along those lines. But regular fluid intake um, to such an extent that when you're urinating, the urine is relatively clear mm -hmm. and you're urinating frequently throughout the day would be ideal for most individuals. And they would, again, want to have something with them that's preferably a cold fluid. It seems to be absorbed a little bit better. Okay. Uh, potentially something, if they don't like the taste of water, they can always go with a non-calorie sweetener or they can mm -hmm. go with something that's relatively dilute uh, and there's several different products in the market or you can simply make up your own product that is relatively dilute in terms of carbohydrate because we do know that a diluted carbohydrate seems to be absorbed and provide a little bit more um, you know, overall effectiveness in terms oh, of hydration okay. for individuals, in particular if they're exercising. And for a lot of people, they just don't like the taste of regular water. So like a juice sweetened water. That would be fine, sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much. Sure.